Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything you have to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and here in the great state of Texas, we have got a bunch of grottos below ground. And that includes our first stop that we found after spending a weekend in Bernie. You see, there's a cave there that has such majestic beauty, it doesn't even need a name. Kendall County sits on the Edwards Plateau and is some of the most quintessential hill country in the state. But below the beauty on the surface lies a cavern with another incredible landscape. We're in the middle of the hill country and it's, it's great. Jesse Hilger built bombs for the Air Force for 14 years, but today Jesse explores this explosion of exquisiteness known as the cave without a name. Do you really like this cave? I do, I love it, it's great. <laughs> you can easily spend two, three hours down there and think it's only 30 minutes. The second longest running show cave in Texas, the cave without a name was officially discovered by James Harold and Mary McGrath in 1938. They didn't expect to discover a, an amazing cave down there, but they did. <laughs> in 1940, the cave without a name took the title of cave without a name. After a local contest was held to name the cave, one nine-year-old boy claimed the cave was too pretty to have a name, so it's been known that way ever since. All right, ready to go. What do they call it, spelunking or no? It's caving, spelunking. <laughs> spelunking. Spelunking. I always feel like I'm flunking. Spelunking. <laughs> This is the entrance. This is the entrance. Is this the entrance with no name? <laughs> yes, it is the entrance without a name. Surely you've heard that before. <laughs> Actually, no, that's the first time I've heard it. Yeah, what am I Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, this is a very modern entrance. Did it have stairs to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> It would have been nice if it would have. Uh, no, actually, this was built in 1939, which is the year we opened up for tours. Wow, this is that old. That's amazing. And this was built at the same time that our uh, gift shop was built. While chasing a lost sheep, the McGrath children first encountered the cave, and the first few feet down, they came across a moonshine shelter. So this is where they brewed the batch. Yeah, we're pretty sure that this is the area. Uh, if you look on the ceiling here, you can see a lot of discoloration. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can definitely tell something was uh, was smoking right here. Yeah. That uh, must have been some powerful moonshine. Must have been. Just a bit further down in the dark was something much more impressive. So we've gone down about 126 stairs. Okay. And here's our cave. Wow, this isn't the foyer, Jesse. This is the great room. <laughs> 80 feet below the ground are six massive caverns with all sorts of curious features. These formations are unreal. These bigger formations in the middle of the room, about how long did it take to form that? Oh, thousands and thousands, beyond thousands of years. I think it's been sitting in this cave when, pick a historically significant event. Yeah. When the limestone was created, it was in the early Cretaceous period okay. and dinosaurs were actually still roaming the earth at that time. Yeah. They couldn't actually roam right over this area though, because this used to be the seafloor. Exactly, down yeah. the water. The marvel made over time almost looks man-made, until you take a close look at the incredible formations formed over millions of years. So over here we have two really cool formations. Uh, the white formation right there is a really unique uh, stalagmite. We call that one modern art because okay. people see different things. Sure. And some of the different things people normally see are mushrooms or jellyfish, but what do you see when you look at it? Uh, I was gonna go with mushroom there. Yeah. That's uh, a very interesting formation. Now, for me personally, I see a brain in that area, uh, but I'm kind of nerdy that, like that. You know what I see now? Hmm. Elvis's hair. Yes, yeah, we've <laughs> been getting that a lot lately. <laughs> that's funny. Now, this formation that's in front of it, uh, that one kind of looks like a nativity scene. Truly, that's amazing. That almost gives you goosebumps. It does. Boy, the first person to run across that must have been like, wow, pretty neat to find that down here. I would imagine so. A little further down the line sits the throne room, a subterranean brook and pools of water surrounded by sediment basins. So in this room, we have some more stone rim ponds. Oh, this is so cool. Are they normally this full? No, uh, these lower ponds actually fluctuate with the uh, amount of rain that we get. This is unreal, those walls of these, each one of these little ponds just looks, it doesn't look real. 
I know. But you know, you, if you've ever had hard water at home, you've probably seen a formation similar to this. If you've gone on an extended vacation and come back to see a little ring around uh, something that had some water in it, like a glass or maybe your toilet bowl. Same type of things happening with this stuff. It's growing on both sides. Wow, I would definitely never call this a toilet bowl. No, definitely not. <laughs> Too pretty to be one. And you can't forget the best food reference you'll find below ground. We have what I've been told is the longest piece of cave bacon in Texas. It measures over 20 feet. Wow. My nephew came down here a couple of spring, spring breaks ago. He was about four years old at the time, and he told me he didn't think he could eat a full piece of it. <laughs> so if you have a hunger for some subterranean adventures, the cave without a name is well worth getting below ground for on the Texas bucket list. I love being down there.